Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm going to wait a few seconds to see if uh, anyone joins in this live stream. Uh, so we just going to wait <laughs> a few seconds. Um, as usual, my live streams are unannounced. However, this one, I did give you all a few minutes, right, um, to prepare to join in. Gave y'all about 20 minutes before I decided to uh, do this live stream. But this is going to be a, a, a live stream that's important for all of you, um, whether you're a student, um, maybe you've already graduated your formal training and uh, you're waiting to test, or even um, if you are an instructor, this live stream is going to benefit you all no matter what. Um, authorized administrator you test under, okay? So I'm just going to wait a few more seconds uh, to see if any more folks join in, and then we can get started. Yes, we can get started. All right, guys, so we have a few folks in here, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So what is Nurse Jar going to talk to you about today, right? That is so real and so unfiltered. Uh, first, I'm going to talk to you all about testing versus reality, how important it is for you to know the difference and for you to separate that. And then we're going to hit on uh, some comments and questions that I've received via YouTube and um, email. And then I want to break down hand hygiene to you all because I've been receiving um, numerous questions and comments regarding hand hygiene, okay? Um, so, first of all, okay, um, Testing versus reality, you have to have a good understanding, both as a student and if you are an instructor, the difference, okay, between, um, you know, what is expected of you uh, to do during your uh, nurse aid certification exam and what is expected of you to do um, in real life. Okay, so I'm going to break it down um, to where it will be easily understandable for everyone. Okay, so in real life, in real life, um, you're going to perform nursing tasks based on what your agency or your company um based on your agencies or your company's um, policies and procedures, right? So even if you learn how to perform peri care um, at one facility or one hospital or one clinic, right? Um, you may not necessarily perform it the same way if you go to a different facility, okay? Because each facility, each hospital, each clinic, um, even home health care, right, has their own policies and procedures on how to perform certain nursing tasks. Now, those policies and the nursing procedures are usually based on best practices, okay? But it doesn't necessarily mean that each and every facility is going to perform a certain nursing task in the same exact manner, or they're not going to expect their staff to perform um, a certain nursing task in the, um, you know, the exact same manner as the next facility. So you have to understand that, okay? Another thing that you have to understand is that my YouTube channel is not... Um, training you on how to perform certain nursing tasks 
for real life. Okay. My YouTube channel is training you on how to perform testable skills pertaining to the individual authorized administrator. So whatever that authorized administrator requires you to do for a certain skill, that's what I'm demonstrating to you in my videos. Okay. Now, if your instructor trains you differently, then that's how they are training you. Okay. I get a lot of questions saying, well, you know, you're doing it this way, but my instructor showed us you know, a different way, right, on how to perform uh, this task. Um, I get that all the time, okay? And um, we as instructors, me as a former instructor of many, many, many years, okay, um, we all train our students differently. We train them in, I guess, the perspective and how we um, perceive what the authorized administrators are requiring you to do. So yeah, you know, my videos may differ from what uh, your instructor has taught you. Now, with that being said, I'm not going to step on any instructor's toes, okay? So if you ask me, you know, should I follow you or should I follow your instructor? I'm going to tell you, you need to make that decision on your own. Now, when you are, um, you know, getting your evaluations, you know, during uh, your training, um, yeah, you probably need to follow what your instructor is telling you because he or she um, has that evaluation evaluation sheet and however he or she trained you to perform a certain task, that's how they are going to be evaluating you. Okay. Um, but again, I'm not going to step on any instructor's toes. So stop asking me. Okay. Uh, because I'm going to tell you the same thing. That's a decision that you have to make on your own. Okay. On how you perform a certain skill during testing. Now, why why are um, the requirements for performing skills during testing totally different than how you may um, how you may perform that nursing task in real life? Well, there's several different variables that affect uh, the response that I'm going to give you. One, in real life, you're dealing with a real live patient, client, or resident. In testing, you're performing these testable skills on a live person who is acting as a patient, client, or resident. Okay? So there you go. You have in real life, you're dealing with a real life resident and testing. You're dealing with a live person who is acting as a resident. Oh, and we must not forget the mannequin, right? You're also performing skills on a mannequin, all right? In real life, your real life resident has... Um, real life medical conditions. They have, um, you know, real life uh, mental conditions. They have mobility, um, you know, problems. Uh, they may have uh, speech, um, you know, uh, issues or concerns, right? Um, so you're dealing with a live person who is an actual live patient, resident, or client with um, real medical issues. In testing, that person, that live person that's acting as a resident, they may or may not, you know, have, um, you know, a, a medical condition, but you as the testing candidate, you're not going to know, right? Because one, that's none of your business, okay? Um, unless they tell you. Um, and two, um, you know, the state isn't concerned with that because this person is only acting, right? Um, they are going to be instructed to um, act a certain way. 
um, for testing, right? Um, the um, evaluator may tell them, you know, you're not able um, to move your right arm or your left arm, or you're not able to feed yourself, right? They're being instructed on um, how uh, to act, okay? Your life, your real life resident isn't. That's, that's them. That's who they are. Okay. That is what is going on with them. Okay. Um, three, in real life, uh, nothing is scripted in real life. Okay. Nothing is scripted. Everything is ad lib. Uh, that's easier for me to say, right? And probably easier for you to understand. Everything is ad lib. So you respond or you perform, you react on how your resident um, is responding to your, uh, you know, to your actions or how you're performing, right? They may be having a bad day, right? Um, you know, they may be quote unquote, uncooperative, right? Uh, they may be combative, right? None of that is scripted. It's all ad lib. It happens as it happens. During testing, uh, basically everything is scripted for you, right? From um, how you perform your opening procedures to how you perform, uh, you know, your testable skill to uh, closing procedures, right? All of that is basically scripted from you. Now, do you have to perform um, exactly as scripted? No, right? The script that we as instructors give to you um, is just a foundation, right? Uh, or a guideline um, to, to help you, right? Um, during your testing, okay? Hi, Nick. Uh, Nick Ashley. Hi, Nick Ashley just got certified. Yes, she did. She took my online refresher course. Nick Ashley, congratulations to you, sweetheart. Uh, Scatter23, congratulations. Scatter23, a new certified nursing assistant. Uh, I passed because of you and my instructor was extremely detailed oriented. Stay focused all the time. Yes, you must. Uh, thank you, Nick Ashley. I'm so excited for you. You you have breathed breathe, uh, breathe life into your dreams, um, and you will from this day forward continue to prosper in uh, all of your career endeavors. Okay, remember what I told you. Remember what I told you. It's all about having that self confidence in yourself and knowing that you can do it. Hi, Cash Girl. Hello, hello. I love it. I love it. Okay, so let me get back because I know I'm going off track. I'm reading some of these comments here. Um, but, you know, again, um, you know, real life is not scripted. During testing is scripted. Uh, for you, right? We have to give you a script so you can better understand um, what is required of you to do and how to do it, okay? Um, for, okay, for in real life, you're not being time. Yeah, you may work an eight hour, 12 hour, 16 hour shift, but you're not being timed on what you do, okay? In testing, you're being timed. You know, you're not being timed on each individual skill that you are required to perform, but you are being tied on the entire entirety of your skills exam. All right. So um, again, uh, number five. Okay, in real life, each agency or facility has their own. Uh, policies, their own um, nursing protocols that they have set in place for you to do, um, you know, from, um, you know, how uh, they want you to make uh, the patient's bed to how they want you to perform a perineal care or how you should give, you know, a person a shower, right? Um, they have their own 
Um, each individual facility has their own um, nursing policies and procedures. And that's why I said at the beginning of this live stream that, you know, you can work in one hospital and jump, you know, go to another hospital and work. Um, and how they expect you to do things are totally different from the hospital you left. Same thing for a nursing home. Okay. You work at one nursing home. They tell you, this is how, uh, you know, you are required to perform, uh, you know, uh, provide perineal care to uh, the resident, but you go to nursing home B and they do it totally different. Okay. For testing all of your skills under the authorized administrators are the same. You're required to perform them in the same exact manner. So um, if you fall under ProMetric and you live in Texas, the way that you are required to perform uh, perineal care is going to be the same way that if you live in Florida and you test under ProMetric, um, how you know, the requirements are going to be the same. So if you're with Pearson View, you know, or Credentia or Headmaster or the American Red Cross, or uh, for some states, it's your local uh, colleges that may um, administer the nurse aid testing, right? Um, however, that skill requirement is set in stone, so to say, right? In your nurse, uh, your nurse aid handbook, um, or your um, nurse aid skills uh, sheet. If you go from one authorized administrator to the next, peri care, same exact steps. Blood pressure, same exact steps. Right? Everything is scripted for you for testing. Again, in real life, it is not, okay? In real life six, you have to uh, deal with, um, you know, again, the resident's response. How are they responding to you? You know, um, are they being correct? Uh, uh, are they being, um, you know, are they co being cooperative or are they being uncooperative? Are they being verbally aggressive towards you or physically aggressive towards you? You're not going to see that during testing, right? How many, by show of hands, how many of you have been paired with a candidate that was uncooperative or that was lashing out at you or that was verbally um, aggressive towards you or physically aggressive towards you by a show of hands? How many of you experienced that during testing? Probably none of y'all, right? I ain't getting no hands, right? So do y'all understand? Do you get my point? Do you see where I'm coming from when I tell you that, you know, testing um, is totally different from real life and even in real life uh, from one hospital to the next or one nursing home to the next, one clinic to the next, um, the way you perform certain nursing tasks are going to differ in one way or another because of that agency's uh, nursing protocols or their policies, okay? So wherever you go, uh, things are gonna change up for you. So you have to be able uh, to adapt to those changes, okay? All right. Now, when we as instructors train you on the testable skills, again, we're training you based on whatever authorized administrator, whichever authorized administrator you test on, their requirements, okay? So for a good example um, would be with, um, Credentia, uh, the bed baths, okay? With Credentia and Pearson View, their bed bath skill is titled modified bed bath, where you're going to clean the face, one arm, and one hand, right? That's the only thing that you're going to perform, okay? Or, or clean. The face, 
one arm, hand, and underarm. I can't forget about the underarm, right? Now their skill, their modified bed bath is performed on a live person versus Prometric, whose uh, bed bath skill is titled partial bed bath, okay? And with Prometric, you're cleaning the face, you're cleaning the neck, behind the ears, the chest, the tummy, the flanks, the one arm, hand, underarm, and the back, okay? So even though it's the same skill, okay, a bed bath, right? These two administrators have two different titles, okay? Pearson View and Credentia's Modified Bed Bath, um, with, uh, Prometrics, it's partial bed bath. And with Headmaster, it's titled abbreviated bed bath. Okay. And they have all different areas, all different requirements on what you need to clean and how you need to perform that skill. Okay. So it's really important that you know, who your authorized administrator is. Now on my YouTube channel or in my YouTube channel, I have playlists. I have a Pearson View and, and Credentia playlist because they're basically one and the same, right? They used to be partners. Now they're, I guess, going their separate ways and, you know, taking different states. Um, and then I have a Prometric playlist and I have a um, headmaster playlist. Now, again, I've explained this to you all before that my headmaster playlist only has, I think, like maybe three or four videos because their, their skills differ. Not, not the way in how you perform it, but the actual skills differ from one state to the next. Okay. And they have like... Um, each state has four mandatory skills. Out of those four mandatory skills, you're going to get one. Okay, so you know that out of those four mandatory skills, you're going to get one and then two or three other skills. Okay, but they differed. So it was like, it's just me, right? Just one person. Um, I can't do, I think they have like 13 states. There is no way I can do all those different skills for all 13 states. Okay. So I started out, but then when I realized what I was getting myself into, I was like, no, heck no, I can't do that. Right. Okay. Don't have the time. Don't have the energy. All right. So I apologize if you are under headmaster, but the good thing is, is that um, if you watch any of my other videos, you know, you can get a good feel or a good understanding of how you should uh, perform the skill because I've had uh, people who have tested under Headmaster when I only had Pearson View uh, videos on my YouTube channel. And they, they told me that the videos were very helpful um, and helped them to pass their Headmaster. Uh, exam. Okay. The same thing with Prometric. When I had absolutely no Prometric videos, uh, people uh, who were testing under Prometric were watching my Pearson View videos and were able to pass their Prometric uh, nurse aid certification exam. Okay. So what you do in real life is not going to be how you're required to perform your uh, nursing skills during testing, okay? And hopefully, if you are an instructor, you are emphasizing that during testing, okay? Because um, based on a lot of the comments, and when I say a lot, I mean like the majority of the comments um, where people are saying, oh, you know, you didn't do this or... Um, you know, you didn't place a privacy blanket on them. Well, if you're under Pearson View and Credentia, a privacy blanket is not required, uh, you know, for bed, bath, or, or peri care or dressing, right? Okay. Um, just as, you know, with the protective barrier or clean barrier um, on the tabletop, okay? Pearson View and Credentia 
does not require that. And yet I'm, I still get people who say they are testing under Pearson view um, saying, oh, you forgot to do this. No, boo, I didn't forget to do it. It's not required for this authorized administrator, right? So if you are an instructor, it is okay for you to, um, you know, emphasize the importance of placing the clean barrier down on, you know, the surface and whatever surface it is, um, you know, um, before the student places their supplies on top of, right? But just explain to them that this is how it's done in real life. And even in real life, right? Even in real life, a lot of times we don't place a, a barrier down. We just like real clean the surface, clean the tabletop off before we actually place our supplies, unless, um, you know, we're doing a sterile uh, procedure. But if we're doing a non-sterile procedure, uh, we usually just wipe the table down, place our supplies, um, and then afterwards, you know, clean the table off again, right? That's real life. Okay. Uh, now, some people may place the clean barrier down in real life. Um, again, you know, it's just the individual um, choice or, uh, you know, whatever, you know, policies and procedures your facility has set forth. Okay. Um, so, again, instructors, if you are an instructor, it is very important for you to be able to separate real life from testing and to be able to emphasize that to your students. Okay. That, okay. This is how we do it in real life. Okay. And also tell them, right now, this is just the foundation, right? Cause that's all training is guys. Uh, the training that we give you is a foundation. Okay. And then once you graduate, successfully graduate, you take that foundation that we gave to you and you take it to your employer. And then that employer is going to show you how their facility do things. So you build, you take that foundation with you and you build upon it. Okay. Cause I can just about probably guarantee you that how we train you to do certain nursing tasks and training is not how um, you are going to be performing it um, at your first, uh, you know, employment, right? Or even your next employment, again, because every facility, every hospital, every clinic has their own nursing policies and procedures and protocols on how to perform certain nursing tests, okay? As a student, you need to have a good understanding as a testing candidate. You need to have a good understanding that there is a difference between how you perform nursing tasks in <clears throat> real life to how you're go going to perform them, excuse me, how you're going to perform them during testing. Okay. Because I tell you guys, I'm... Like, I don't even respond anymore to people who comment. Um, I have one person comment on um, hand hygiene that said, um, I would have failed the skill if I was testing because I washed all the way up to my elbows, okay? Um, one, one, um, in all of my videos um, that, have hand hygiene where I'm demonstrating hand hygiene. I have never washed all the way up to my elbows. Okay. Um, I've always washed my hands from fingertips to my wrist. All right. Um, in all of my videos, y'all can go watch and see. Okay. All right. Um, and two, um, that's not a cause for fail. If you decide to wash all the way up to your elbows, that's up to you. I encourage you not to because even when you just wash up to your wrist as you're required to do, right? And there's your wrist bone. So wash up to that wrist bone as you're lathering, right? Your hands and you're doing this or you're doing this to lather your wrist. Guess what's happening? That lather is being pushed up on your arm. 
So when you're done lathering your, your hands, fingers, fingertips, and wrists, you're going to have soap on the lower part of your arm. Okay. So that's probably what this person was talking about, even though this is not my elbow, right? Because I've never had to rinse all the way up here, right? But the lather, you're actually pushing up that lather. And that's why I encourage you during testing, don't lather all the way up to your elbows. It's not necessary. You know, you're not um, going to perform any type of surgery or assist in any type of surgery, right? So you don't um, necessarily need to do that. Okay. All right. Um, so like comments like that, I don't even respond. Um, comments that, you know, say, oh, you're wasting so much water. Guys, really? For real? <laughs> I'm wasting water, okay, when I'm performing hand hygiene. Um, that's what's required for testing, okay? Um, so bring it up to, uh, you know, the authorized administrators, okay, <laughs> right? Have them to add more steps in where you have to collect the paper towel, turn off the faucets throw the paper towel away, rinse your hands, grab more paper towels, turn off the faucets, throw those away, grab more paper towels to start drying your hands, right? Bring it up to the authorized administrator, okay? If you think that, you know, I'm wasting, the way I'm demonstrating the skill is wasting too much water, okay? It's not me, boo, okay? That's what is required of the candidate, how uh, these authorized administrators want uh, or need candidate to perform, okay? So comments like that, I don't respond to anymore, okay? I may see them and as I start reading them, I'm like, oh my goodness, come on, okay? All right, <laughs> this person evidently does not know or understand that my YouTube channel is uh, a training channel, right? Uh, to supplement uh, your formal training, right? For manual skills. So how I'm performing or demonstrating these skills is based on the requirements of that particular um, authorized administrator. Now, am I trying to be mean? Am I trying to be rude? Am I trying to be disrespectful? No, I'm just being what? real and unfiltered, right? Because sometimes, unfortunately, some people, you have to be that way, be real and unfiltered so they can start, you know, so it can get up here, right? So they can like really truly understand. So that light bulb can go off in their head and say, oh, okay, now I get it. All right. So she's not wasting too much water. That's how that authorized administrator is telling the student and the candidate, you know, this is how you have to, you must perform this skill in this manner. Okay. All right, booze. Okay. Let me look on here. Uh, <clears throat> oh, good question, Cash Girl. So, Cash Girl, <coughs> excuse me, hold on, guys. Cash Girl is having um, difficulty remembering what supplies to collect, right, uh, for certain skills. Now, uh, what, how I train my students was first, how many supplies you need to collect for each skill, okay? Before I even told them, okay, you need three washcloths, uh, two linen protectors. Before I said anything like that, I told them, okay, for, uh, you know, partial bed bath, right? This is for Prometric. You need 14 items, 14 supply items. Okay, for foot care, you need eight supply items. Eight. For hand and nail care, you need 10. Right. So they first learned how many supply items they would need to collect 
for each individual skill. Now, once they um, memorized or knew, okay, how many supplies, that is when I started telling them what supplies, okay? So for, let, let me just get a simple, um, let, let's take for bedpan. I think bedpan is seven items, right? This is for Prometric now, okay? Not for Pearson View or Credentia or Headmaster or the American Red Cross. Okay, I'm referencing Prometric. So for Prometric, you're going to need a linen protector, which you can use seven items, okay? A linen protector. Um, you can either use a towel or a waterproof pad or a chucks pad, okay? Or it, on your scenario, if it specifically tells you to use a waterproof pad, then you need to use that waterproof pad, okay? So one, you're going to need, um, and let's, let's do it this way, okay? Um, if you're with Prometric, you know always that the first supply item that you are going to collect is going to be a clean barrier or a protective barrier. Okay, for your clean or protective barrier, you can either use a chucks pad or a towel. So that's one supply, right? And then Two, when we're talking about bedpan, well, bedpan, hello, right? Get a bedpan. Now, depending on what your scenario says, will determine whether you get a standard bedpan or a fracture bedpan, okay? Depending on, so if it's in your scenario, if it says that your, um, your resident is recovering from um, hip fracture or fractured femur, well, fracture bedpan, right? Okay, a lot of this is common sense. If it's not saying any of that, then you know just to go ahead and get a standard bedpan, right? So now we got two supply items. We have the clean barrier. We have the uh, bedpan. Okay, for Prometric, you're required to place a linen protector underneath the person before you place the bedpan. So now that's three items, okay? Clean barrier, bedpan, linen protector, okay? Then you're going to need a package of wet wipes, okay? That's four. Uh, a roll of toilet paper, that's five. And then two pairs of gloves, right? So, oh, I remember, guys, seven items, right? So, and the reason why this is so important, Cash Girl, okay, the re you're with Credentia, okay? So with Credentia... And if you're with Credentia and um, if you're with Credentia and oh, Pearson View, you're only going to need six items. Okay, so everything that I just said, except for the protective or clean barrier that you place on your uh, tabletop. Okay, so if you know how many supply items you need to collect, right? You can, you can actually count them while you're collecting the supplies. Okay, linen protector uh, or a clean barrier, one. Linen protector, two. Bedpan, three. Toilet paper, four. Wet wipes, five. One pair of gloves, six. Second pair of gloves, seven. Okay, seven. I know this skill takes seven items. I have seven items here. Or you can count while you're placing your items, organizing them on the table, right? Because a lot of times you know, you may get confused if you're trying to count and collect the supply. So um, I would tell my students, just wait till you get your supplies. You can do it either way you want, right? But it's best just to wait till you get your supplies set up and organized on your table and then count. And when you count, if you're under pro metric, don't forget that clean barrier, okay? Because sometimes you may count and say, oh shoot, I only have six items. You know, six items. I got the bedpan. I got the linen protector. I got the um, toilet paper. I got the wipes. I got the two pair of gloves, but I'm missing something. What am I missing? It's what is up underneath all your supplies, that clean barrier. Okay. So don't forget to count that. Right. But um, 
Yes, it does make sense, Cash Girl. It does, right? So um, that's what you want to do. If you're an instructor, instructors, this works, okay? It works. Um, I've used this system for many years, okay? And it works. Um, tell your students, you know, how many supply items they will need to collect for each skill before you actually start telling them what supply items to count, right? Um, because it will help them um, actually um, learn those supplies much better or learn what supplies go with what skill uh, much quicker, okay, if they know the number, how many. And then it will help them during testing as well, right? Because if they get up there, and, and usually with your water skills, if you're short one item or you collect it uh, one item more than necessary is usually a washcloth, okay? You either don't have uh, the correct number of washcloths, right? Maybe you need to get another washcloth or you have collected one too many washcloths, okay? That's what I've seen over the years when um, students leave out a supply item or they um, have one too many um, of something. It's usually the um usually the washcloth or the linen protector that they have forgotten if they're you know minus a supply okay but that is the best um advice uh, cash girl that i can give to you is learn how many supply items go with each skill and then from that point um learn the exact supply items you'll need to collect for that skill. Now, again, every instructor is different, right? So I can sit here and tell you, you know, if you're testing under credentia for bedpan, you're going to need, um, what, six supply items for foot care, you're going to need eight supply items, right? I can tell you that, but your instructor um, you know, they may throw in a privacy blanket, even though that's not required for Credentia or Pearson View testers, they might just throw in, you know, have you place a privacy blanket over the person um, for bedpan or catheter care. So that's going to be an additional, right, item. So instead of, um, you know, eight items or, or what? How many items do you need for catheter care? Let me see. You need the linen protector. You're going to need one, two, three washcloths. You're going to need a basin. You're going to need soap. You're going to need a pair of gloves. And I think that's it. For Pearson View and Credentia. Okay. So I have my linen protector. I have my basin my soap to clean, three washcloths, one to wash, one to rinse, and one to dry the basin. And I'm forgetting something. Oh, pair of gloves. Okay. So that's seven items. So for catheter care under Credentia and Pearson View, you'll need seven items. Okay. For Prometric, you'll need to add three more items. So you'll need a total of, I think nine or 10. Okay, so pro metric, you need a clean barrier and a linen protector, that's two. You'll need a bath basin, that's three. You'll need soap, okay? You'll need um, five washcloths, right? Because for pro metric, not for Pearson Viewer Credentia, but for pro metric, you're also going to wash and rinse and dry uh, the inside of the labia majora, okay? So you need a washcloth to wash the labia majora, a washcloth to rinse the labia majora, then a washcloth to wash uh, the catheter, a washcloth to rinse the catheter, and then a fifth washcloth to dry both the labia and the catheter, okay? And then you'll need your pair of gloves. So that's 10 items. So you see the difference, right? 
Under for catheter care for Pearson View Credentia, you'll only need to collect, I think, I believe seven items. But for Prometric, same skill, catheter care, you'll need to collect 10 items. So that's why, guys, it's very, very important that you know who your authorized administrator is. Okay. It's very important that you know who your authorized administrator is. So you know which playlist uh, to follow or to watch videos on on my um, YouTube channel, right? Or you know, like if you search Google for your nurse aide candidate handbook, that will tell you, right? If you don't know and your instructor hasn't told you, ask. Okay, ask your instructor who's our authorized administrator. If they don't know, all you have to do is do a Google search, North Carolina Nurse Aid Candidate Handbook, Texas Nurse Aid Candidate uh, Handbook, right? And it's going to pop up under your authorized administrator. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. Um, before I start reading the comments, I want to talk to you all real quick about hand hygiene. Okay. So the most valuable advice that I can give to you when it comes to hand hygiene, okay, the actual skill, not just the actual skill, but during your skills exam is if you ever have to question, should I wash my hands now? go ahead and verbalize washing hands, okay? Because it's better for you to wash your hands more often than you're actually required to do so than not verbalize washing your hands when you should. Because one, you're gonna get a no for that step because you omit it, right, a step. And you're going to get um, a flag for infection control. Okay, so if you ever have to question, oh, am I supposed to wash my hands now? Just go ahead and verbalize washing hands, okay? Whether you have to or not, okay? Just verbalize it, okay? Because again, um, it's safer for you to verbalize washing your hands um, more times than necessary than you not verbalizing washing your hands when you actually should, okay? All right. Um, again, with uh, when you during your skills exam, washing your hands, um, you wash your hands immediately after removing and disposing of your gloves. OK, so that means removing your gloves in a manner that you're not going to self-contaminate, disposing of your glass excuse me, gloves into the wastebasket and then verbalize washing hands. Now, what I would tell my students, okay, because this has, this has got to become ingrained in you, okay? It has to, okay, for testing because a lot of times when people fail their skills exam, they don't fail due to om omission or performing an actual step within that skill they perform, excuse me, they fail due to one of the five indirect care skills, communication, infection control, safety, uh, privacy, dignity, and, and uh, patient preference, right? They fail based on something that they did or did not do uh, with those indirect care skills, all right? You have to make sure that before you verbalize washing hands, that those gloves have been disposed of. So you're not going to take off your gloves and as, as you're disposing of your gloves, say washing hands, you're not washing hands, right? You still have a pair of gloves, a pair of rolled up gloves in, in your hand disposing of them. So you're not going to get credit for that step. And what's going to happen? You're going to get a no for omitting verbalizing washing your hands. Because even though in your head you're saying you did, but that nurse aid evaluator is looking at you and saying, how can they wash their hands when they still have something in their hands that their gloves aren't even, haven't even been disposed of yet? Okay. 
and you'll get a flag for infection control. So you remove your gloves, you dispose of them into the waistband before you take a step away from that waistband is when you verbalize washing hands because I can just about guarantee you that if you take them off, dispose of them and rush to turn and get back to that bedside, you're going to forget to verbalize washing hands. So do so before you take a step away from that trash can, okay? After you have disposed of your gloves and before you step away from that trash can or waste basket, okay? All right. Now, let's get to the skill, the actual skill hand hygiene. Um, no matter what authorized administrator you test under, hand hygiene is going to be the very first skill you perform. Now for Prometric on your skills instruction card, hand hygiene and indirect care skills are not going to be listed on your instruction card. You're only going to have three skills, okay, listed on your instruction card. That does not mean that you don't have to perform hand hygiene. What Prometric is saying is that as a nurse aide, okay, who has just successfully completed their nurse aid training, you should know that before you touch that resident, you need to you need to have clean hands, right? So it's assumed that you know this, right? And you should, okay? Before you touch a client, you should have clean hands, right? I'm sorry, guys. I got like a lot of gnats just flying around here. Um, I even bombed last night, right? And they're still flying. I think they're coming up through the drains, but they're pesty little critters. All right. So first skill, always to be performed, whether it's listed on your skill set, uh, you know, peace and view, credentia, or listed on your skills instruction card for uh headmaster and pro metric. Now for headmaster, y'all, y'all are different in a way that um, <clears throat> you're taking like after each skill, <clears throat> excuse me, your hand hygiene is built into your first mandatory skill, okay? And you're different because after each skill you perform, you're taken into like a relaxation room, so, so to say, right? While the nurse aide is set up and then when he or she is ready for you, she'll go in there and she'll read off your scenario for your second skill and then again for your third skill, right? With Prometric, you're read off your your scenario at the very beginning, okay? And even though you're going to have your uh, card with you, right? So your skills are built into that scenario, okay? What you of what skills you need to perform? Pearson view and credentia. You just have a skill set, so all five skills are listed on that one skill set. Hand hygiene being the first, usually. The second skill is your measurement skill, unless it is a urinary output. And then you have your three random bedside skills, okay? Uh, you don't have a scenario-based test, all right? Um, you just have to make sure that you perform those listed skills in the exact order as they are listed on your skill set, okay? So there, that's some differences between... Um, you know, how the authorized administrator's skills testing is set up, all right? <clears throat> Just to give y'all a quick overview. All right, okay, so now y'all understand how important it is for you uh, to verbalize hand hygiene during your skills exam when you're required to do so. For headmaster, and this is for headmaster only, um, you not only have to verbalize washing hands, but you have to actually use hand sanitizer, okay? Whenever you're required during testing to wash your hands outside of actually washing your hands with 
actual running water and soap for the skill hand hygiene. Um, headmaster candidates, you're actually using hand sanitizer whenever you're required um, to wash your hands. For ProMetric, Pearson View, and Credentia, uh, any time after you have performed hand hygiene that you're required to wash your hands, you need only verbalized washing hands. Okay, and don't be like, um, I'm verbalizing washing my hands, just washing hands, okay? Because when you go to the sink, you don't say that, right? You just go to the sink and turn on the water, wet your hands and wash your hands, right? So when you're verbalizing, just washing hands and continue on, okay? Whenever you're required to do so. Um, you're welcome, Cash Girl. Uh, thank you, Nick Ashley. Nick Ashley, um, I have a couple of mock uh, skills video um, on my channel as well. And Nick Ashley said that, um, you know, uh, those were very helpful um, as well with, you know, her um, preparing for her uh, certification exam. And she passed. Yep. You took it on the 8th, right? July 8th, she passed. She took it and she passed. So congratulations to her. Um, again, also to Scatter23, congratulations to you as well. Awesome. All right. Now let's talk about um, the hand hygiene skill. Okay. The hand hygiene skill. All right. One, you have to lather your hands for at least 20 seconds. Okay. Lather your hands. The lathering of your hands does not include the cleaning of your nails and with ProMetric, the cleaning of your nails and cuticles. That is not a part of the 20 seconds, only lathering, okay? Now, you have to lather your hands, fingers, fingertips, and your wrists, all the way up to your wrists, okay? So what should you not be wearing? Somebody tell me, what should you not be wearing for this skill? I'm going to wait a few seconds and see if anybody writes anything down because I want y'all to be interactive, especially with this. Any jewelry. Thank you, Cash Girl. Thank you. No hand, no finger, no wrist jewelry. Okay, so if you have a watch on, I strongly advise you <clears throat> to take it off, put it in your pocket before you start uh, your testing. Don't wear any finger jewelry, okay? No rings, no bracelets, nothing, okay? Because if you perform hand hygiene and you have those items on, you're going to get a flag for infection control. Now, will that fail you? No, it will not fail you, but... You want to try to sustain or refrain, not sustain, but refrain from getting flags, especially during your first skill, okay? So no hand, finger, or wrist jewelry, all right, okay? Lather all the way up to your wrist, okay? If you so desire to lather up to here or to here, that is on you. But when you have to rinse, if you lather up to your elbow, you're probably going to end up with soap up to here, your mid upper arm. How are you going to rinse all that off? I want to know. Can anybody tell me? All right, you're going to have a hard time trying to rinse your arm, okay? So only your wrists. Again, as I stated in the beginning of this live stream, even when you're lathering just up to your wrist, look what I'm doing. What am I doing? I'm pushing that lather that's here. I'm pushing it up my arm. Am I doing it on purpose? No, I'm not. That's just what happens, right? So you're going to end up with soap up to here, maybe even up to your mid lower arm. Okay. Even with just lathering up to your wrist. Okay. But it's easy for you to stick that lower arm. Okay. 
underneath that sink, okay, or that faucet, right? Okay, but it's, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to rinse soap off your mid forearm if you're lathering all the way up to your elbow, okay? All right. First thing, okay, if the faucet has two taps, you have to turn on both taps, okay? Now, don't turn them to the center setting because you have two taps, okay? If you turn both of them to the center set setting, you're going to have water splashing everywhere. So for two taps or two handles, all you have to do is turn both of them on, okay? If that testing sink has one handle, now you have to turn that one handle to the center setting, okay? Two handles, you just turn them on. One handle, turn on to the center set or turn it to the center setting, okay? All right? Once you do that, you're going to rinse your hands or wet your hands, okay? From the wrist to hand, fingers, fingertips, okay? So you rinse, all right? Now, my big this this is just my biggest pet peeve is like having water all over the sink, around the sink, the countertops, right? Do y'all know why that is? Can somebody tell me how that happens? It happens because you go from wetting your hands to reaching over to getting the soap. And as you're reaching over, all that water is just, you know, dribbling off of your hands, right? So for testing, please, please, you can gently tap your hands together, right? So you're standing up at the sink, okay? You're standing up at the sink, right? I've wet my hands, okay? Make sure you keep your hands below the level of your elbows, okay? Fingertips down, and then just lightly tap. Okay, I think someone in the comments was like, oh, you're not supposed to tap. You're getting water all over the place, right? This is not getting water all over the place. I'm just tapping, gently tapping the excess water is going straight down, okay? Or you can gently wiggle your fingers. What you do not want to do is this, shake, because now this, doing this one, your hands are coming up above the level of your elbows, right? And this is causing that dirty water to splatter all over the place, okay? This, you're not going to splatter. This, you're not going to splatter. But this, you are going to splatter. So don't do that, okay? All right? So once you have gently removed any excess water. Now you can go over and reach and get your soap. And when you get the soap, guys, don't just get one or two little pumps. Okay. Get a lot of soap. Okay. Because as you're lathering, right, that um, the lather is going to oxidize, meaning it's going to start breaking up and dissipating. It's going to start disappearing. So you want to get a lot of soap. Okay, to start out with. And then you start lathering your hands. All right. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, or four Mississippi, five Mississippi. I, I teach my students, or I taught when I was instructing my students to use the storm count. Some people say, oh, ABC, sing the ABC's song twice or happy birthday song. But when you're during testing, you're going to be nervous, okay? You will, right? Um, and you're going to be singing, okay? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, or A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You're going to be singing about two or three times faster than you normally would. And you probably will not make that at least 20 seconds. But if you're doing the storm count, whether you say, one 1,000, two 1,000, or three Mississippi, four Mississippi, right? Or one, you know, however you do the storm count, you're actually getting, counting two counts in one, right? One 1,000, two 1,000, three 
1,000, four, 1,000, five, 1,000, right? So I only count it to five, right? But look how many fingers I'm holding up. So you're getting two counts per every count, every storm count, okay? Even if you're counting fast, one 1,000, right? One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, five 1,000, six 1,000, right? You're, you're still going to meet that at least 20 seconds because you're not just doing one count. You're actually doing two. Are y'all following me? Right? Okay. All right. So you've counted to uh, 20. I tell my students count to 25. Okay. 20, 1,000, 21, 1,000, 22, 1,000, 23, 1,000, 24, 1,000, 25, 1,000. Now that you have counted up to 25 using the storm count, now clean your fingernails, okay? And all you have to do is this, rub your fingernails against the opposite palm. Please do not forget your thumb. If you think you're gonna forget your thumb, do this, okay? Do this to clean your nails, all right? To show that you know that you should clean your nails. So I have it like this, okay? Almost like a C, right? C, just like this. You can do it like that, okay? If you think you're going to forget your thumbnail, okay? Or you can do it like this, okay? Um, some students do it individually. You can do it like that if you want to, but I'm gonna be, what? I'm going to be real with you all, right? And unfiltered. Doing each individual fingernail is wasting your time, okay? When all you have to do is like this, like this, or like this, and like this. That's it. All they want to see is that you know that you need to clean your fingernails, or underneath your fingernails. Now with Prometric, you not only have to clean under your fingernails, but also your cuticles, right? So again, if don't sit there doing like this. Yeah, in real life, you probably would do like this, but you're being timed during your test. All they want to see is that you know that you are to clean your cuticles. So just do like this. I'm cleaning my cuticles. Bam, you're done, okay? All right? <clears throat> now for Prometric, does it matter if you clean under your nails first or your cuticles first? It does not matter, okay? You can, you can clean your nails first, then cuticles, or clean your cuticles and then your nails, okay? It doesn't matter, all right? But just remember you're being timed, all right? So you wanna try to Shave time off wherever you can, okay? All right, so now that you have lathered your hands for at least 20 seconds, you have cleaned underneath your nails and or underneath your nails and cuticles, go straight to rinsing, okay? You don't need to lather again unless you didn't, you know, count, use the storm count, right? Go straight to lathering. Now, whenever you are, or not lathering, but rinsing, whenever you're lathering and or rinsing your hands, you have to make sure that your hands are maintained below the level of your elbows with fingertips down, okay? Now, with rinsing, okay? So you're rinsing, right? I'm rinsing my hands. After you rinse your hands, Usually you're going to have some soap left here, okay, where you where you missed out on, okay? This is where it's usually at, right up here, okay? What you want to do after you rinse, keeping your hands below the level of your elbows with fingertips down, just twist your elbows and look, okay? And then twist them the other way and look to make sure you have removed all the soap, okay? Because I can probably guarantee you that you're going to end up with soap over here on the outside of your wrist, okay, where you miss, okay? So just, just like this, okay? And then any soap that you miss, 
Now you can rinse that off and then I will double check, okay? Again, you're going to gently tap your hands, your fingertips together or lightly wiggle them, okay? None of this, all right? Um, and then you're going to reach for a paper towel to begin drying your hands. Now, you have to begin with your fingertips on each individual hand first. Okay, that's for Pearson view and Credentia. And I believe also with Headmaster, okay? You have to, as soon as you get that paper towel, go straight to your thumb, okay? So I'm, I grab the paper towel straight to my thumb, drying each individual finger on each hand first. Now I can dry the remaining areas of my hand, wrist, lower arm, okay? Um, for Prometric, I train my students to do it the same way as Credentia in Pearson view, right? Um, I, I don't know. That's just the way I, I, I train it. But for Prometric, they're not really concerned with you doing each individual finger first. For Headmaster and Credentia, they are. Okay? They are. That is an actual, uh, speci it specifies, that step specifies dry hands beginning with each individual finger first. Okay? Um, so... You um, so paper towel dry each individual finger first and then remaining areas. Now, if you reach and grab that paper towel and do like this or like this, um, you did not start drying your fingers first, you 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 started drying your hands first and then you went to drying your individual fingers. So make sure you don't do that. Okay, because as a nurse aid evaluator, they see you doing that. That's a dry, like that's a dry wipe. You're you're drying your hands. So reach for that paper towel, go straight to your thumb, right? Dry each individual finger, and then the remaining areas of your hand, wrist, and of course your lower arms, because that's gonna get wet as well. Okay. Now Every time, it doesn't matter how many paper towels you use, you use as many as you need to get your hands completely dry, okay? So if it only takes one paper towel and your hands are completely dry, then so be it, okay? Uh, if you need more than one paper towel to dry your hands, so be it. Okay, I usually it usually takes three uh, paper towels for me to get my hands completely dry. Okay, but if you have to use more than one paper towel to dry your hands completely, once you finish with one paper towel, you need to dispose of it. Don't hold it in your hand and get another paper towel and add it to it and dry. Okay, so paper towel, dry, blah, 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 throw away. Grab another paper towel, continue to dry, throw away. Oh, my hands are still a little damp. I'm grabbing a third paper towel, dry, throw away. So after you have used each, you know, individual paper towel, you need to throw it away. Okay, don't hold it in your hand and add two, okay? Now, once you have completely dried your hands, now you grab a clean, dry paper towel to turn off the tap or taps. However, if that testing site has a sink with one handle, just turn that one handle off, okay? If it has two handles, you can use the same paper towel to turn off both handles and dispose of your paper towel, skill complete, done, okay? Well, however you wanna say it, and then move on to your next skill, okay? Now, uh, someone did mention in the comments that, um, ooh, you didn't use a paper towel to turn on the faucet, right? Okay, that's not required. You don't have to, all right? Do that. You don't, you, you're not required. I don't care what 
authorized administrator you're testing under, you are not required to grab a paper towel to turn on the faucets. You're only required to grab a clean, dry paper towel when you have completed your hand hygiene skill and it's time for you to turn off the water. Okay. All right. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. There was something else about hand hygiene. I'm trying to remember. Um, I told y'all about the at least 20 seconds, the importance of using the storm count, um, maintaining your hands below the level of your elbows with fingertips down, both with washing your hands and rinsing. Told y'all about the drying. Dry the individual fingers first in the remainder areas of your hands. Told y'all about the double handles. Just turn on both. Single handle, you're going to turn that single handle to the center setting. Um, told y'all how to gently tap or remove any excess water from your hands. Oh, verbalize everything you're doing, please. Even with hand hygiene, okay? Oh, that's my timer. Okay, verbalize everything you do, no matter what skill you are performing. Verbalize, okay? Verbalizing, even when you're doing your self-performed uh, skills, skills that you're just performing on yourself, right, such as hand hygiene or PPE or uh, urinary output for Credentia and Pearson view. Um, verbalizing those steps will help you stay, stay focused on what you are doing. It will keep your mind off of that nurse aid evaluator, okay? Uh, verbalizing what you are doing too will help you recognize if you're omitting a step or if you're performing a step incorrectly, okay? All right. Um, three, it will calm you. It will calm your nerves, okay? It will calm your nerves, right? So verbalize everything that you're doing from hand hygiene to your bedside skills, no matter what. Okay, and one important thing, when it comes to your water skills, like your catheter care, peri care, your bed baths, foot care, hand and nail care, right? When it comes to those skills, you have to test the water first before having your resident to test the water. Now, you can test gloved or ungloved, okay? You can test with your finger, with your wrist, or with your elbow, you can test while you are at the sink filling the basin, or you can wait till you get back to the bedside to test. Wherever you test, whenever you test, verbalize doing so and verbalize it out loud, okay? Because nine times out of 10, your back is going to be obstructing the view of the nurse aid evaluator, depending on where they are standing, or even if they're standing on the side of you, like right there on the side of you. The point when you test the water, whether you test it with your finger, your wrist, or your elbow, they may be looking down. Okay. They may be looking down and may not see you do that. So when you get back to the bad side, right? Or if you're already at the bedside, you say, okay, um, you know, I've tested the water. Can you test it for me? In their head, they're like, I didn't see her or him test the water. I didn't even hear them say that they tested the water. Are y'all following me? So if you say it, I'm testing the water and you say it, that NAE is looking down or just turn their head for a quick second. They heard you say that you're testing the water. They may not have seen you do it because their head was down or turned in a different direction, but they heard you say it. So guess what? You're going to get a yes for performing that step. 
verbalize everything you do, even with hand hygiene, even with PPE, even with urinary output, verbalize. Now, when it comes to your bedside skills, you got to verbalize because that person that's lying in the bed acting as the resident has the right to know what you are going to do to them before you do it. Okay. So please verbalize everything that you do. I've already, um, you know, stated um, how, you know, it's going to benefit you, why it's going to benefit you, okay? You got to verbalize everything that you do. Um, Red man. All right, congratulations, Redman44 passes skills test. Thanks to you and your videos. I appreciate what you do so much. Thank you, Nurse Jar. Oh, thank you, Redman44, for supporting my channel and being loyal. And I'm so glad that for all of you who are taking your exams or who, you know, you're currently in school, if my videos are instrumental in any way um, with your learning, um, you know, and you successfully, uh, passing your clinicals, uh, your, you know, your, uh, clinicals and during training or, you know, passing your entire training, uh, passing your skills. Um, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. And, and I thank you for being the loyal subscribers that you are, um, uh, Bearing with me as I'm making, you know, this transition to uh, a new healthcare career as an esthetician. Um, so I thank y'all a lot. Um, I know y'all probably getting tired of me, you know, posting esthetician videos on my training channel, but I'm slowly trying to integrate um, uh, those videos um, on my channel because my channel is already. Uh, built. It's already stable. It um, already has you all, you know, as, um, uh, you know, loyal subscribers. Um, and eventually I will have um, my own channel for my esthetician. But for now, I just don't have time to create one. And I'm just like slowly integrating or incorporating those videos um, with these training videos. And hey, they're going to help y'all. Y'all going to know how to clean your face, right? How important skincare is, right? Okay. Um, all right, guys. So I am over my time. My timer already went off, but I did want to go through just a couple of the comments uh, here um, on my YouTube channel. Hey, hello, 4351 uh, commented. Thank you for this informative video. This was... Uh, the pro metrics changing linen with uh, while the resident is in the bed or occupied bed. Uh, keep being a wonderful human. Thank you so much. Hey, hello, 4351. I will. And the only thing that hey, hello, 4351 hates are the commercials, the ads. But guys, that's how I get paid. YouTube is my livelihood. Okay. Just like y'all have a job right? YouTube is my job, okay? So this is, is my livelihood. YouTube is how I pay uh, my mortgage, my rent, my car note, my insurance, right? So uh, the, the videos or the ads that stream through my um, videos, um, is, that's how I get paid, okay? That's how I get paid. And I, I got to get paid, right? Just like y'all got to get paid, right? Am I lying? No, I'm not lying, okay? YouTube is my livelihood. This is my job right here, okay? So I got to get paid. But on the flip side of the coin, if you're not liking the ads, you can always purchase what? YouTube premium, okay? $12.99 or $11.99, a month, okay? Purchase YouTube uh, premium and you won't have to worry about the uh, streaming ads through my videos, okay? Because them ads are going to play. I got to get paid just like you got to get paid, okay? All right, but if you don't, that's just an idea, okay? A suggestion, purchase YouTube premium, okay? And you won't have to worry about 
uh, the ads. <clears throat> uh, Queen Angel, thank you, Nurse Jar. I completed a refresher course for the CNA position about three and a half weeks ago. Uh, we were taught to always. Okay, here now. Remember what I told y'all at the beginning of the video, okay? Queen Angel says, we were taught always to use a bath blanket for extra comfort, privacy, and warmth when providing perineal care. In real life, yes, you would. <clears throat> for testing, it is not required, okay? Y'all, please, instructors, please, okay? Teach your students or instruct your students. Make your students knowledgeable of the differences between real life and testing, okay? Real life and testing. For peri care, you are not required to uh, place a um, privacy blanket over the person. In real life, would you do that? Yeah and no, okay? I mean, I personally, as a nurse, I would let the person know, you know, hey, Miss Roberts, I'm going to be cleaning you up. You know, would you like a privacy blanket? Because at some point in time, I'm going to have to have you exposed. You may get a little cool, you know, would you like for me to grab you uh, another blanket? You know, this will help, you know, keep you uh, warm and um, also help with, you know, keeping you, you know, a little more covered up. Okay. That's what I would do in real life. Okay. Um, so again, instructors, and I'm gonna put this on you instructors. Okay. Hopefully I got some instructors on here. <laughs> I'm gonna put this on you, please, please, please. Teach your students the difference between real life and testing. Don't mesh those two together. This is the way, this is the foundation on how you need to perform this nursing task in real life. This is how you are required to perform this testable skill during testing. Keep them separated, 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 okay? Because now during testing, you're going to have your students performing additional unnecessary steps. One, that's going to eat up their time. Two, it may cause them to make a mistake because of this extra step that they really didn't have to do. And now something they did or didn't do during that you know, step messes them up. Okay. Don't have your students doing any additional unnecessary steps. Keep how things are done in real life separate from what or how it is required of your students to perform the testable skill during testing. Okay. Because remember, I'm in this live stream, I'm I'm being real and I am unfiltered, okay? So I'm, I'm going to come, and really all my live streams I am. I, I'm very, very um, transparent, like very transparent. Um, two times, all right, two times. I like that, two times. Uh, Nurse Jar, I want to thank you for your videos. They were very helpful to me. I took my skills and written exam this Saturday and passed on the very first try. Yeah, two times. Congratulations. I know it's because of your videos. So thank you again. That, guys, that just, oh, my goodness. I just, I love, I love, I love reading comments like this. Like I, you know, because I know that my videos are, are helping someone, you know, someone in this world is, is helping. Um, 
Uche, I hope I'm saying this right. Uche Chig is U C H E C H I G. Um, thank you for the videos. I'm really scared. This is all new to me, and I have been reading textbooks nonstop that I don't understand my daily life again. Um, I have no skill idea. I'm very, I'm really scared. I have four weeks just started. All right. Um, so Ucheg, um, it sounds like you are probably in a, um, fast track program. Um, One, and I, I say this all the time, stay positive, okay? Stay, stay positive. Um, be around people who um, spit off or spin off positive vibes um, and just practice, right? Whatever your instructor instills in you, carry that with you outside of the training and practice, okay? Study when it comes to your written exam and when it comes to your skills. You have to carry away with you what you were given in training and practice outside of training, especially in these fast track programs, even, even in year long programs, right? I, I, uh, instructed with uh, through in a school district where their um, training was the entire school school year, but that's still not enough time because we had what an hour and a half of class time, right? Hour and a half uh, class time, but I may have had anywhere from eighteen to twenty three students each class period. And an hour and a half is going to take, you know, the first 15 minutes, you know, the students getting settled in, me taking attendance, right? Um, you know, just recapping what we went over the day before and introducing them to what we're going to go over today. That's 15 minutes down the drain, right? So now I have an hour and 15 minutes, okay? Um, hour, uh, you know, to, you know, lecture, if I'm doing lecture that day, or, you know, maybe um, where they're learning a skill, right? 30 minutes for me to demonstrate uh, because, you know, students are asking questions as I'm demonstrating, I'm stopping, I'm, you know, uh, answering those questions. Um, each step that, or each action I perform, um, I explain the why behind that, right? So that's what 30, 30 minutes gone. So now I just have what 45 minutes left. Okay. Um, that's not enough time, right? And really only 30 minutes because we got to stop, you know, at least 10, 15 minutes before the bell rings. So, you know, everybody can clean up, straighten up the lab area. So it can be organized for when the second class period comes in, right? So you're talking about 30 minutes, Okay, 30 minutes for 18 to 20 something students to practice. And I had four beds, right? Um, had three mannequins, right? I left one bed for a live, uh, right? For a live skill. Um, <clears throat> that's still not enough time because you are learning. Okay, you're not going to be able to perform uh, peri care in 10 minutes. It's probably going to take you 20, 25 minutes, right, to perform it because you are learning. So from that 30 minutes, uh, those 18 to 23 students, only four really got to practice that day, okay? So you have, you must carry away with you what your instructor has instilled in you, what they have demonstrated to you, what they have trained you outside of that, uh, outside of your class and practice at home. I cannot emphasize or stress that enough. You have to. Okay. Uh, one more. And then I got to go guys. It says, uh, this is from user UD 
UD2FH3SE3C. Um, hi, Nurse Jar. I just want to thank you for the amazing job. You are so helpful. Thank you. God bless you. Just passed my CNA skills test. Awesome. Awesome. Congratulations to you. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna read this one um, real quick. This is in regards to uh, uh, PPE, the donning and doffing uh, your uh, your personal protective equipment, PPE, uh, gown and gloves only. Okay, I had someone. I I, I know I'm getting off track, but I had someone to comment that um, you know, hey, you're doing it wrong. You know, PPE requires you to have a mask and goggles as well. No, boo, PPE does not require you. First of all, PPE are just items, okay? What requires you to wear or don certain items of your PPE, your personal protective equipment, is determined by what type of isolation you're gonna be walking into, okay? Okay, how those uh, pathogen, uh, you know, what their mode of trans, uh, what their mode of transmission is, that determines what type of what items of PPE you wear. Okay, all right. For testing, you only have to don and doff gloves and gown. Okay, or gown and gloves. All right, for testing. So, um, Chani uh, Dior2508 asks, if the gown is a little bit open, will we fail? Well, one, you're not going to fail um, if the gown is a little bit open. What the NA, remember I told y'all at the beginning, the nurse aid evaluators on, like, especially with hand hygiene or with PPE, they need to see you doing certain things, right? Because them seeing you or observing you do it, they know that you know what you need to do. So when it comes to donning your gown, um, I'm sorry, guys, I'm looking to see if I had any PPE gowns in here, but I don't. Um, if you show that you are, you know, putting your gown on, and let's say you, you're turning around and you're, you know, doing this and you tie it and then you're, you know, getting it, like just re-doing uh, it, like trying to get it adjusted, right? If it comes open, um, you're still going to get credit, right? Because that NAE um, has seen you, they know that you know that it needs to be closed um, as much as possible. Don't say completely but as much as possible in the back, okay? So you won't fail if it's, you know, a little ways open, especially if they see that you're trying to adjust it uh, to get it closed as much as possible in the back, okay? Um, I got one comment here. Um, Um, no, uh, Cash Girl. Uh, Cash Girl asks, should we always make sure uh, the client has their table close to them uh, during the closing procedure? So you've already completed uh, the scale. Uh, basically, you're just shutting everything down, making sure the bed is in a low safe position, uh, making sure the you know your client is comfortable, uh, that they have their call light in their hand, right? Um, and that, you know, whether or not they want their privacy uh, curtain to remain, um, you know, open or closed, or, you know, do you want me to open it back up? So basically it's just repeating um, your opening procedures, right? Um, just put everything back where you got it from. So if uh, the overbed table was at the foot of the bed, I just move it back to the foot of the bed. 
If it was at the side of the bed, uh, just leave it there at the side of the bed, right? Um, you, basically, your closing procedures, you're just putting everything back the way it was, okay? So it's not, again, it's not real life where you would want uh, to make sure that that person's um, overbed table is within reach, right? Because in real life, uh, your patients use that overbed table for their personal items, right? They may have their glasses, their phone, uh, their laptop or um, iPad, right? Books, right? They use that for their, that's their personal, um, you know, area that they use. So in real life, yes, if they have personal items on there, then yeah, you, you'll you leave it, you know, within their reach. But for testing, you're just putting everything back uh, where you got it from, okay? All right, Cash Girl. Thank you so much for your questions. Everybody who commented, asked questions, thank you so much. And remember, these live streams are for you. They're not for me, okay? They're for you. Um, so take advantage of it, guys. You know, ask, this is your time to ask questions because again, um, a lot of times I do not get uh, notified or YouTube doesn't send a notification every time uh, someone comments, okay, or ask a question. Um, and why they don't, I don't know, okay, because like I have a notification here that someone just um, <clears throat> commented. But, um, you know, if I were to actually go on, um, you know, my my YouTube page and look at all the comments, I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, somebody asked this question five days ago. YouTube didn't notify me. Right. Uh, so some I get no sometimes I get notified. Sometimes I don't. So when I have these live streams, this is for you. This is for you uh, to ask questions. OK. All right. Or, or to comment on anything that you need to comment about. Um, guys, remember, if you want to refresh with me, um, I am, um, you know, doing uh, the online uh, virtual refresher uh, is fifty five dollars an hour. Fifty five dollars an hour. But you know, right now I'm doing it for $25 an hour. Okay. And some people ask me why you charge so much. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to undersell myself. Okay. Again, this is my bread and butter. This is how I'm making my money. Um, but for right now I am charging only $25 an hour. Um, you'll get a lot of help from me, um, even though it's virtually, right? Um, if Nick Ashley is still online, she can, you know, vouch for that. Um, she had a couple of sessions with me and she passed. Yes, she passed, right? Um, and not even, you know, a lot of times too, um, you know, with Nick Ashley, if you're still on here, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm going to use you as an example um, Nick Ashley, man, that, that girl was on fire. She was on fire. Um, and I told her like, what you need me for? <laughs> right. Even I had her do a three skill, um, mock test. And then the last session we had, she did a, a full blown skills exam, uh, for me. She didn't know what skills, um, I, she was going to have to perform. Um, you know, I told her, uh, you know, just when we, you know, she's just before she started, um, and she nailed it. Like she nailed it. And I'm like, what? I don't understand what you need me for. Right. Um, so with Nick Ashley, her, um, her issue wasn't with her competence because she was extremely competent. The, um, whew, when I tell you the girl, was on fire. She was on fire, not only with her performance, but with her communication, like her communication was par none. Right. Um, hers was, was with self doubt, right? She, she doubted herself. Um, and so I'm able to help you, uh, with that, you know, if, if, if you're, you know, you don't have that self-confidence that you need, right. Um, I'm here to give it to you. I have good ways right? To give it to you and, and to make you feel confident and know that you're not only confident, but you are competent uh, to, in performing the skills 
um, and in passing, okay? So again, I'm gonna write my uh, email address up here for those of you who do not know it. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, you can email me directly at nursejar1323 at gmail.com. If you are interested in receiving um, some online refresher, whether you're still in training, um, whether you've already graduated training and you're waiting uh, to take your exam, whether it's your first time taking it, second or third time, um, these online uh, trainings, this virtual training, so you'll have me, you'll see me, and I will see you, right, um, are, are really helpful, okay? And um, again, uh, regular is $55, but um, for the summertime, I'm only charging $25 because I want to make it uh, you know, really affordable, uh, for people to take advantage of. Okay. Um, oh, thank you, Nick Ashley. Nick Ashley says I'm worth it. Invest in yours. Yes. Invest in yourself, invest in your future. Thank you, Nick Ashley. And, and that's true. You know, Nick Ashley is speaking 100, like, um, you have to invest in yourself. You know, if it costs $25 or $55, is your future worth it? Right? Is your future worth it? Um, and hopefully you say, yes, it is. Okay. Um, because it will help you, Nick. Ashley, thank you for verifying that. Um, Cash Girl, how often do I do these lives? Oh, don't ask me that, Cash Girl, because my lives are usually impromptu. They're they're just like, oh, let me go live, you know, and talk to my subscribers. So I really don't have it like planned out, but I do try to do a live at least, you know, <coughs> once every two weeks. Um it, I, I wanted to do it like once a week, but now that I'm in esthetician training, um, I try to do it like once every two weeks, but sometimes I'll just, I'll pop on, um, you know, and like I said today, I gave y'all about 20, 25 minutes, right? Um, notice. So I, I actually scheduled, scheduled it uh, for 530, but when I scheduled it, it was already, I think it was like five after five or something like that. So I gave y'all a few minutes to, uh, get prepared for it. Hi, Veronica. How are you? All right. I'm glad you attended today too, Cash Girl. I am. All right, guys, I have got to go. I have got to uh, study for an esthetician exam <laughs> that we're having tomorrow. Um, hey, yeah, if y'all are in the San Antonio area, if you're in San Antonio or the, any neighboring cities and you want a facial, you want a lash lift, you want your eyebrows laminated, I'm your girl, okay? You get it for free, right? But I do appreciate tips, but the service is free, okay? Because I can't charge you um, while I'm a student. Um, but yeah, so if you're in the area, uh, email me, okay? And uh, come in. Uh, let me give you a facial or um, a lash lift. Lay down, the, you know, a lash strip or something, right? Okay. Wax. What you need waxed, right? All right. Um, all right. Veronica is joining us from New Jersey. All right, Veronica. I'm getting ready to go, y'all. Um, if you're just popping in, um, uh, you know, watch the replay of the video, a lot of important information, uh, excuse me, that will be very beneficial to you all at the beginning of this live stream. Excuse me, guys, I'm so sorry, I'm burping on camera, <laughs> I'm so sorry. but I'm keeping it real and unfiltered, right, for y'all, okay. Um, but yeah, so um, y'all just, you know, continue commenting and, and asking questions, um, and again, during these live streams, I do these live streams for you. Um, this is your opportunity to ask questions, 
um, you know, make comments, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I, I want my live streams to be very interactive, okay? Um, and then if you do want uh, to do some online refreshers with me, uh, just, you know, hit me up uh, on my um, on my email, okay? Don't do it in YouTube, okay? Because again, I may or may not uh, get your comments. So if you have um, questions like you need something answered, um, the sure thing for me to response will be uh, at my email address and I have it here typed in for you. Um, I usually try to answer, respond to my emails within 24 to 48 hours. Um, you know, I, I get really busy, so I do apologize. Okay. But usually within 48 hours, uh, you'll have a response. Um, they are on Nick Ashley. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, Nick. Y'all listen to Nick Ashley. She said, turn your notifications on. That's that little bell. Okay. That little bell. Tap on it, turn it on. And yes, you will receive a uh, notification and updates uh, whenever I'm going live, uh, whenever I post, uh, you know, upload a new video. Uh, again, you know, as far as like nurse aid training videos, um, I'm not able to do so yet because I have not um, gotten a mannequin. Um, so that's what the super chats are for, okay? Y'all can purchase a super chat. That will help me to get a mannequin, um, but I'm just not in the same venue, right? Uh, because I'm retired now, I don't have that. Um, I don't have a classroom setting. Uh, but me doing live videos like this, um, hopefully, will be able uh, be helpful and beneficial to you. All the videos, the recorded videos that are uh, in my playlist, are still good. They're still valid. There's uh, there's been no changes to any. Um, of the authorized uh, administrator's requirements when it comes to performing, uh, you know, the uh, your testable skills, okay? So all videos are still good, still up to date, okay? I'm keeping up. I'm retired, but I'm keeping up with it, okay? All right, guys, I have got to go. I've got to study Nick Ashley, Cash Girl. Thank you all so much for being uh, interactive I uh, end this live stream. Veronica, thank you so much. You have a good evening. Um, Red Man, uh, congratulations again. Um, and who else was it? Scatter23, Nick Ashley, uh, you as well. Congratulations so much. I love you guys. Y'all refer my channel, okay? for my channel. I got to get to 50,000. Okay. I want to be a moderate tear influencer right now. I'm a micro influencer. Okay. Micro. That sounds so small, right? I want to be a moderate. That's my next goal. I need uh, 50,000 subscribers. I'm at like 4.6 K right now. So I still got a ways to go. Okay. 6,400 subscribers. Uh, but with you all referring my channel out, uh, people subscribing, um, I really appreciate that. Thank you all so much for help uh, having my back and staying loyal to me. Um, I love you all. I love you too, Veronica. Mwah. Love you all. Ciao.